every day we grow up, I mean, we heard it from moms. We've heard it from grandmas. I mean, even now uh, in the social media space, you hear it from me and Alex and you hear it from a lot of other people. Live on less than you make. Yada, 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 yada. Live on less than you make. Live on less than you make. The funny part I realize is everybody always say live on less than you make, but they never provide examples on, you know, what they did to live on less than you make. I mean, Dave Ramsey, of course, he talked about, you know, living on rice and beans and all the other stuff. So today we're just going to give you examples of what we did to become, you know, financially successful, you know, how we've, you know, reached net worths, you know, over a million dollars and things of that nature. Uh, so we're just going to go back and forth. Alex, I know you're going to have something crazy, but let's just, you know, spitball some different things that we did over, you know, our time, especially building that foundation building block. Again, the foundation building block is live on less than you make so you can have money to invest other places. So going with you, I'll let you start off. What's one thing that you or your family did to live on less than you make so you can have money to invest? So we definitely did do that, you know, the 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 rice and beans food route or like pasta that's that's like always going to be the cheaper end of food we kept our grocery bill pretty low um keeping you know keeping an eye on that and not really going out to eat we didn't go out to eat ever i mean for years and a lot of people they like to have those like special occasion days of like oh let's have a date night there was like no dates for years <laughs> no dates at all and so we would look for ways to like things we liked to do out we tried to see if we could do it at home so just the savings wise and then just give me a, like just a brief a brief synopsis of what y'all did for date nights but what was the savings on that so there's different things we did, but one of the big ones was we went to the movies quite often. Um, it was like almost every weekend. And I would say that cost about 30 bucks a weekend. And so we had converted a spare bedroom that we had after our roommates moved into a movie room. And I think the total cost on that was about like six hundred dollars. So with with you, you know, investing or putting that money six hundred dollars to the movie room compared to you going to the movies and you said thirty dollars i mean i've been going to the movies forever last time i paid thirty dollars like in the 80s so you must you must was going there getting one popcorn <laughs> and y'all cutting it in half or something but so what was the what was that savings what was that savings like from going to the movies and then uh i know you did the math so what was the savings like instead of going to the movies just watching movies at home yeah so going to the movies was you know it was if it was thirty dollars every weekend that'd be about what fifteen hundred dollars per year so then six hundred dollars to do that room and we had used it for like two to three years so it saved us probably about over two thousand dollars twenty five hundred dollars around there and it um i learned from my mom how to get those cheap movie dates you go to dollar tree get the candy that's that's what you do there you go there you go okay so 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 yeah so one thing that, that we did i mean like i said i mean it's been said on the channel many a times you know we was heavily in debt and and first one i gotta give kudos to my wife because she thought of it uh like in texas utilities can get up there you know we had this big house that we didn't need uh, two floors, 3,000 square feet, AC running because Texas is hot, lights everywhere, and then we had ceiling fans everywhere. And then, you know, the ceiling fans that had the four and five bulbs, you know, we unscrewed, we unscrewed the light bulbs in there. Um, like I said before, uh, everybody probably need glasses in our family now because we couldn't see. But that was one thing we did. We set the thermostat. You know, we usually have it like at 65, you know, to stay cool. My wife set it at you know, 75, and then she locked the thermostat so it can go no lower. So it was simply, if you get hot, you better go take off your clothes or jump in the bathtub or something because this AC is not going down. So that saved us about, let's say we was paying in the 300s for utilities. And then after we, you know, made adjustments, didn't use the utilities as much, you know, and all the other things that I talked about that we did, it brought our utility bill down to you know the 100 so it dropped about 200 off our utilities 
because we was using a lot. We had a lot going on that we was using utilities on that we just sit back and thought about like, we don't need all this stuff. We don't need to have lights on for this. We don't need to have this on for that. Um, so that was like one of the big savings there. So, you know, let's go with a $200 savings or $150 savings times 12 months. You know, that's what $2,400 right there that instantly can go from utilities to a mutual fund to a Roth IRA or something like that. So what are some of y'all did? So another thing, and I had learned this from Graham Stephan was making iced coffee i mentioned before i really didn't understand i really didn't realize iced coffee could be made at home i thought you had to go out and buy it i don't know why i thought that way but that's how i thought anyways iced coffee was a big one considering say it's about maybe five dollars on average per cup that you buy and i was buying it quite often probably about every other day so every other day 15 days, $5, that's, you know, that's what, $75. So going down to about 30, 40 cents a cup. I know Graham Stephan talks about 20 cent iced coffee, that, but that's, that's like lower end. So I, I need a little bouge in mine. So it was about 30, 40 cents. <laughs> and so, I mean, you can only imagine the amount of savings on that. And yeah, like you said, all that extra money is just going right back into investing. So what what is the average? How many cups of coffee do you drink a day? So yesterday I drank four. Yeah. So so yeah. So if you went out and bought those, at, so if you went out and bought those every day, that's about what about twenty thirty like bucks 20 a day. Dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, definitely do like coffee. Another one that we did. Cause like I'm saying, I was I was in debt. So when we're saving on that utility bill, I was saying you can invest, but you can't invest. But we was using to pay off debt. But um, one thing that I realized is if you get rid of things that are luxury, you can have more money. So for for our instance, we was already in the in the rat race of car payments. Well, I was. You know, my wife's car was already paid off. And then so the goal of just hurrying up, paying off the car and driving the car to the literal wheels fell off and not going to get car payments again. So, for instance, my truck, five hundred and twenty dollars a month, you know, being 100 percent focused on cutting down expenses and then paying off the debt fast as possible. But once it was paid off, it was not, oh, I could go buy another car. It was drive the car drive the car if it get dings dents it didn't matter i'm still riding it um i got in a car accident they didn't total it so i got it fixed i got it fixed and i just kept riding it i kept riding it and then we average about 15 years on a car and then we but the thing is is now you don't have that 500 a month car payment and then back then the roth ira is six thousand a month so just by not having that car payment, it opened up the ability to invest in a Roth IRA to put that money there instead of paying a car payment, paying somebody else to pay in myself so I can have money in the future to live off of, especially in retirement years. So that was another avenue of just hurrying up, paying off the debt and getting those monthly payments out the way instead of coming up with new payments, using that money to invest. Yeah, the car is my favorite one probably i think that was my biggest money saver and giving me the ability to invest i didn't have any payments and whenever i did damage it or something i did not go to a repair shop i just did what i could to fix it and a lot of people care too much about what they drive and how it looks to other people and i could care less that car the ac stopped working i remember one day i had the windows rolled down it was raining it was terrible but i did what i could just to keep the car because it was saving me so much money that i wanted to keep that going in order to invest so the car is definitely a big one yeah another one we did and of course sticking to the theme of living on less than you make is so we had this we built this big 3,000 square foot of home. It was just me and my wife. 
Um, and then I had another person living there, but, but still the house was way too big. The house was way too big. So what we decided to do was actually sell the house. So we was paying $1,400 a month for the house. We picked up and moved to a 600 square foot apartment. Most of the furniture we gave away back then, we didn't know about arbitrage and selling and all the other stuff. But so we gave most of the furniture away or put it in storage. And then we moved into a 600 square foot apartment. So from 3000 square foot house to a 600 square foot apartment. But the savings we had on that was we went from paying $1,400 a month to paying $600 a month. So that was an $800 swing that, but we didn't take the $800 difference and say, oh, now we have $800 extra to go do X, Y, and Z. We used that money to invest to, again, build on our future. So that was something else that we did. And still to this day, we live on less than we make and we still invest that money and keep trying to build the net worth higher. One thing my wife had done was give up um, some of those luxury things that women like to do. She didn't do her nails for years. She didn't go and regularly do her hair, nothing like that. Those were some things that she had given up on her part. Um, for me, I had just stayed home, basically. We always rented out space that was free as well so we freed up space we rented it out so that we could cut our living expense all right and then last but not least for me um one of the things one of the things we did and it it helped us out a lot and at this time we was you know we're fairly well off but the ideal of spending living on less than you make and not spending as much on things that just didn't matter, like you said, the luxury things. And a lot of people, they're going to be mad at me for this, is when we had our kid, when we had our kid, we did everything at the secondhand store. We didn't go buy the new this. The only thing that we bought that was new was a car seat. And I believe... Yeah, it was a car seat and my wife, she wanted to get back into running, you know, after the baby, she wanted to get back in shape. So she got a running stroller. That's the only thing we bought new, of course, Pampers, but that's the only thing we bought new. But everything else was secondhand. It was either going to the marketplace to get cribs. Yeah, bought a new mattress for the crib, but going to secondhand stores to get clothes and all that other stuff going to the mall and stuff for that. My son, he still don't know what a mall is. I think he's been in a couple and the only thing he think a mall is for is to eat food. You know, so that was one thing that we did to save money. I, I remember seeing a study back in the day to raise a kid from zero to 18. It costs about a quarter million dollars. As soon as I saw that before my son was born, I was like, oh, no, I'm going to beat that number. I'm going to beat that number drastically. And then, you know, people have kids. I get it. You love your kid. You know, you buying stuff, but let's be truthful. You spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on stuff that they will only use for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, especially when it comes to clothes as a baby. I don't mean, I don't know how many times I've seen three months old and a pair of Jordans that they only go wear for like four days before they, the shoe is too small. So everything, we just went secondhand store. Um, I think my son didn't start getting new pairs of shoes until his feet start getting big when he turned what six seven years old so it wasn't we wasn't going to follow the crowd there and go to you know bye bye baby going to you know going to uh, jc penny going to all these big name stores that had you know these you know big ticket items for a kid that wasn't going to be that small for a long period of time so we always you know, look for different avenues to try to save there. I mean, hand-me-downs, you know, he had cousins that's older. We used to get the clothes when they outgrew them and we just held on to them. And then when he got to that size, we just gave him the clothes. It wasn't nothing being thrown out or thinking that we was too good to wear something somebody else had. That's what you got washing machines for. But it, say, it gave us a big savings when it came to raising a kid. Absolutely. There's plenty more, but not to keep this video long. If you guys have any additional ways to save money, let us know down in the section, in the comment section below. Uh, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.